once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, bringing down rain and even lightning. So I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War. Governments have been playing with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. We're actually using trillion watt lasers now. They precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure enough, you can actually bring down electricity down the, down the beam. The bad news is, if it's a clear blue sky, it's not going to do anything at all. Because it only takes water vapor that's already in the air and condenses it. However, you name it, outdoor events and agriculture and flooding and even hurricanes, all of them could be subject to weather modification. If you've noticed today, many places that you go, everybody's got that cough that doesn't seem ever to go away. It's frightening because my healthy patients have had it, my sick patients have had it, and it has seemed to plague everybody, and no one seemed to be spared from enjoying this hack at one time or another. It's extremely difficult to get, and it doesn't seem to be dependent on your immune system, which makes me suspicious that it's coming from an external source. An interesting article came across the internet a few months ago that talked about the chemtrail flu. Now realizing we're breathing some very strange things in the atmosphere, taking a totally different approach, and this has been a touchdown for my patients here at DHS.
international corporations are modifying our weather all the time. And they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. Programs are impacting microclimates needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination. The other issue is that a lot of times we're talking about mitigation for climate change. It's rather an undefined term at this period of time. And so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce, supposedly, global warming. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production not only here in the United States, but worldwide. What you're seeing now, a lot of times, many scientists know, especially at NASA and in other areas, that the skies that we're seeing are not normal cloud formations. These are man-made. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year, and we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, manganese, and all of these spiked at the same time in various drinking water supplies across the state of California and also in Arizona. So what's happening with these atmospheric tests is that aluminum, as one example, gets into the root systems of our trees, and it looks like the trees are dying of drought, but they're not. Many of our forests in Redding, California, and other areas are dying from warmer temperatures produced by persistent jet contrails, also impacting tree health and crop health. They know from scientific studies back in the 1970s that they deplete beneficial ozone in the atmosphere by releasing nitric acid. Bird carcasses littering the streets of Zug Island, Detroit. These kind of events are happening all over the globe. We don't hear about them because of all the theater that I've mentioned at the beginning of this program. The population has no clue what's unfolding and the mass carnage, the mass die-off all over the world while the military industrial complex continues to expand, while the medical industrial complex continues to expand. From this report, with hundreds of screeching seagulls hovering above the rotting bird carcasses littering the streets of the scene near Zug Island in southwest Detroit. The scenes seem straight out of an apocalyptic horror movie. This is only one event. I'm giving one example of many events around the globe. Residents and commuters reported the deaths some claiming to have seen at least, to have seen hundreds of bloodied and rotting bird carcasses at a time. Experts are supposedly investigating the issue, testing, and trying to produce answers, but have come up with no conclusive conclusions. This is what the agencies do.